Hi, welcome to another edition of OTEC TV. I'm Michael Howe and I'm sitting here with Greg Howard, the newest member of the OTEC Board of Directors. This is a great opportunity to introduce Greg to you, the membership. And uh, so Greg, thanks for joining us. You bet. And uh, great to have you here. And of course, Greg is filling the seat that was vacated by the unfortunate passing of Stanley Weishauer, who was one of the founding board members. So big shoes to fill, no doubt. You bet. Yeah. I feel privileged to uh, be able to uh, fill in on that role and uh, I look forward to working with the board and on many of the important issues that they face going forward. So, And there are a number of important issues we face and we'll touch on what you bring to the table here in a moment, but why don't we just start by getting to know you a little bit. You bet. Tell, tell, tell us a little bit about your personal background, okay. your family. Sure. Well, I, um, I grew up uh, in the big town of Somerville, Oregon, uh -huh. <laughs> population maybe 100, and uh, graduated from high school at Embler. And uh, after high school, I went, went on to Eastern Oregon University, uh -huh. attained a degree in uh, business and economics and specialized in accounting. Um, during that time, uh, I worked on a farm growing up and I continued that through college. I, I got real comfortable doing that. I, I believe it taught me a lot in life um, as far as values and work ethic. And, and then from, from college, uh, I, I went over. I, my first job was on the west side of the state. I thought the, the grass was green over on that side. Uh -huh. I couldn't, couldn't wait to... So many do. <laughs> yeah, couldn't wait to get out of the grand thought, you know, right. dude, I'm going to go over there and and really lead the fast life. And, right. uh, but anyway, I'm, I came back after a year, found <laughs> out that I missed the rural life, and uh, I haven't been sorry since that I've been back. So. Oh, okay. And uh, so, been active in the community since you've been here as well? And, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, you, you, you were telling me before we turned the camera on, coaching kids, sports, and uh, a whole slew of other activities. Yeah. yeah um, well, when uh, my kids were growing up, uh, I uh, was involved coaching my son in the youth baseball program in, in LeGrand and really enjoyed doing that and um, watching That's a lot him of work. work. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely is. But uh, And not that I'm an expert in baseball, but I had really good assistance. And, huh? and then I also helped out uh, on the football side too, an Optimus football program and was an assistant coach on, on that level too. But yeah, I've, I've, in the past I've been actively involved on the Optimus, in the Optimus Club. I'm a past member of the Union County Chamber of Commerce. Um, so, you know, I've should, tried to should, stay involved in the community. Yeah, just a broad range of things. Now, not just your involvement in the community, but uh, obviously you're brought to the Board of Directors uh, because of uh, your professional background. So why don't we dive into that a little sure, bit? Sure, sure. Well, um, well, I started my career, I've, I've worked at Boise Cascade for over 28 years now. It's, it's gone by fast, but I started started off um, as uh, the accountant office manager at the Elgin complex where we have two, two mills. And uh, I did a lot of cost studies while I was out there, cost analysis, got a feel for um, how to, you know, how to how to analyze projects mm -hmm. on a on a mill level basis there, and I, through um, the years, worked my way up to the position of uh, accounting region accounting controller uh, in 1994, and I did that job for approximately 10 years. Oh. And then, most currently, I've been the operations production manager out at Elgin Complex. I, I went back out there and in and in took another career path in a 2004, and so I've enjoyed that challenge too. Right. Boise Cascade, that's uh, that's OTEC's largest member. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get to see the uh, power bills, especially in my previous right. job and as far as our budgeting process. So now, as OTEC moves forward, we've been around 21 years now and uh, have experienced a number of changes. The system is much more reliable than it was when we took it over from CP National, but there's a number of challenges ahead, and your business background sort of sets you up nicely for that. Yeah, um, I've been... I've been really fortunate in my career. I've been able to work with some really bright people through my uh, as I progress through my career, and I've been involved in when I was in the accounting department doing numerous different studies, mill configuration studies, mm -hmm. uh, timber timberland timber appraisal studies, and and uh, 
anyway, just completed a, a broad array of, of different analyses and studies and managed. Um, I was in charge as the controller. I was in charge of the accounting department with um, over 700 employees and oh. um, all the timberland that came with that. Um, we had 10, 10 business units that we did the accounting on as well as uh, uh, the purchasing department and uh, the information mm -hmm. systems department. I was in charge of that too. So that, uh, that really helped my background for me when I went back into the operations side and went back out to the Elgin complex because now with that experience it allowed me on that side I'm actually in charge of implementing the capital that gets allocated to our facility and building the capital plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a five-year capital plan and, and making sure that we execute on our projects and, and in charge of improving our business as we go forward. So and it's right. it, it was really a valuable experience for me. So with your professional background, the strengths of operations management, finance, and accounting, uh, and, and with the challenges OTEC faces ahead, whether it's power supply issues, uh, making sure that the rates remain affordable, and you know it's safe. I, I, I know prior to the camera coming on, we talked about safety a little bit, and uh, it just sounds like a good fit. Yeah, um, I, you know, when when uh, when I was looking at at this position, I, I I took a step back, and for me, I felt like the time is right for me, given. Um, one, both of my kids are in college. Mm -hmm. I, I believe I have the time to dedicate to this, and I really feel like you know my prior experience up to now is would be a huge asset to bring to uh, the table for OTEC, and so I just I think that could be a, a huge plus for somebody coming in, having to face these same issues and make these mm -hmm. same decisions. And um, I'm used to managing a budget in the multi-million right. dollar range. Our you know our corporation is the largest. Corporation, you know, in the valley right. here, and we've been been in here for years. So I've I've, I've been involved and engaged in that on a regular basis. So I, I just feel like I think I could bring that experience to the job. Right. Well, sounds like a perfect experience as OTEC moves forward. Of course, there are challenges, but at the same time, the future is bright. I mean, OTEC's incredibly committed to the community, very involved in the community, and uh, uh, is very optimistic about the future of Eastern Oregon. And sounds like you are as well. You bet. I, I'm, uh, I, I like to look at myself as being a positive person and, and looking at possibilities <laughs> right. in far, in as far as uh, where we can go to. And uh, I look forward to seeing OTEC continue to be successful and navigate through um, some pretty big hurdles coming up in the future, but I have no doubt that that, uh, that can be done. And, um, I'd like to be part of that team. Great. Well, great. Thanks for taking the time to join us today on OTEC TV. You bet. Thank you. <laughs>